Hi, I'm Allison Pryor and I teach acrylic paintings for the beginner step by step in real time so you can follow along with me. And today I'm going to show you how to do this beautiful painting in Bob Ross style. This is a painting I did at a Bob Ross class and it's in oils. It's an oil painting, okay? And today I'm going to show you how to do this in acrylics. Now Bob Ross used a liquid white so we're going to make our own liquid white today and we're going to use it behind our acrylic so that it'll blend the longer. liquid white or the magic white uh, bill alexander that's bob ross's teacher had the name magic white it's a wet on wet liquid that you use behind your paintings for wet on wet painting and bob ross called it liquid so we're going to make our own liquid white today it was like this is a 16 by 20 canvas it's a wrapped around canvas okay I love these because you can just hang them right up on the wall. But that's a beautiful painting. So, it's probably not going to be exactly the same, okay? Because you do the same painting twice. It's not going to be the same. It's just the way it is. So, this is my oval canvas. See? See how I got the Mac Tech on it? That's Mac Tech, okay? All right. I'll see if you can see that as wrap around canvas okay so what I did was I got my hubby to do it actually and this is what he came up with because I said I where am I going to get an oval I don't have an oval big like that he said I got a brilliant yeah. idea the top of our roaster <laughs> so it works it's a big oval and he put it on the Mac Tech drew it out and then he cut it out <laughs> that's my oval so, so this is the Mac Tech you can buy it at any dollar store, Walmart, wherever, and it has a backing on it that you peel off. And when you peel it off, it'll stick to your canvas, okay? And you lay your oval, whatever you're going to use to make an oval, lay it on there, draw it out with a pencil, and then cut it out with scissors. If you use one of those sharp knives as possible, it might cut the paper, tear it. So once you get a little hole, then just use scissors to cut around your drawing, your oval drawing. And then when you get that done, then you take that and you put it on your canvas. Obviously, you tear off the center oval, right? You tear that off so that the canvas is showing through. And then you um, put it on and you stick it on there and then you paint and then when the painting is done you just tear it off and then you got a beautiful oval painting so i hope that helped and i really hope you do this this is a lot of fun so what i did with my canvas was i put some tape here and it's a little under halfway it's it's more down under halfway because i want to leave more sky for the mountain so we have room for the mountain okay and what i did was i got some of my paints together on my palette and I have my ultramarine blue and my burnt sienna and my cat red and cat yellow and sap green and titanium white and you can use burnt umber if you like All you, if you don't have burnt umber you can add some black to your brown and I may put some black on there also so the paints we're going to use today for this painting are sap green Cad Red, Cad Yellow, Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Sienna, Black and White, Titanium White if you have it. And if you don't, and you can also use Burnt Umber. Uh, if you don't have Burnt Umber, you can add a little bit of black to your Burnt Sienna. It'll darken it up a little bit for you. So I will show you that as we go. I we'll just have a, a size 12 synthetic brush. See, it's stiff, nice and stiff, but it's soft and it's. Uh, so chiseled edge and I have some liner brushes I have three or four different kinds because sometimes they just won't give you the results unless they're really thin on top and I have a couple of fan brushes so you need two or three of each because you don't know if maybe it just won't work for your painting for some reason and I have a smaller flat brush and I have a palette knife so like I say have different sizes. If you have anything on hand, just put it out just so in case you need to use it, okay? Let's make our liquid white or magic white, whatever you want to call it. And it's the underpainting for, we'll call it undercoating or a base coat for our, uh, we'll start off with our titanium white or any white paint that you have there, okay? And you get a measuring spoon and you get about a teaspoon or, or a tablespoonful 
because it's not very big so that's and you so you can use a, about a table I'm just going to measure it out this way and so about a tablespoon full of white okay and that's just white paint now I love this one here I love this but I can't get it yet I ran out it's empty but I really love this this is a blending gel okay I don't have it so I did have one I put in my Amazon shop is this one here liquid X and it's a slow dry blending medium and but I do find a gel lasts it, it stays with a little longer so I'm going to put equal amounts so I'll get a, a tablespoon of this I should shake it up I suppose just to be sure <laughs> and I will put about an equal amount so I, I'm doing my own measurements and I will get this one I really like this one this is professional slow dry blending gel medium and um, so that's a nice one too it's got the other one I just use is kind of fluid and it's got like a cloudy look to it but this one's very right thick so when you scoop it out so scoop it out but a tablespoon or a teaspoon whatever you're going to use and put that in with your mix okay and I'm just using equal amounts you can use 20% to your acrylic paint but I find that if I use equal amounts it stays wet longer and it's a nicer blend so you're going to stir that up and you're going to get a really nice mix so that's it that's it for your blending base coat for your wet on wet techniques you don't always have to use this so I'm going to show you a way not everybody has these blending gels so if you don't have these I'm going to show you another way that you can extend your drying time and put like a nice white base coat because it's the white that makes your paintings brighter look and it brightens up the colors really nice that's that's what it is I mean you can use the blending gels without the white if you don't want your colors to mix in with the white but I love the white because it really brightens up my colors. So I dampened my brush this is the brush I'm going to use to put on my sky and I'm going to first of all put on my liquid white my base coat okay like I said you don't have to if you do, if you don't have liquid white I'll show you in a minute what you can do okay to get that white and make it look really nice so look I'm, I put lots of it on there and I'm going to put it on on the top part I'm gonna leave the bottom just in case we work on the top for an hour and then it'll all be dried up on you so I'm just gonna use it on the section I am working on okay so just use it on the sections you're working on and then that will help save it okay there we go I love this uh, technique gosh it makes your paints move so fast and it just makes your paints like silk silk and satin it just feels like silk and satin when it's going on and, and when you put your paints over it's amazing nice now that's all slick slick and ready to be painted on okay now what I was going to say was if you don't have these blending gels all you have to do is mist your canvas you can mist it or you don't have to you can mist your canvas okay and then just put on your white paint just white paint it won't stay wet as long but at least you'll have your under base coat your undercoat your base coat for blending the paints um, and making them brighter and making them move further and that way you don't have to use as much paint now what we're going to do is the sky we're going to use the same brush so we'll use the same brush and we'll pick up some blue 
So pick up a little old ultramarine blue. Because this is still wet white, just pick up a little bit. You don't need very much. Like I said, this saves you on paint. I'm just putting it on the corners of my brush there, just so I won't have too much. And I'm going to paint the top of the sky, just the top up here. Now it's okay to go outside and, and go on your t on your Mac Tech. That's fine. So look, see how the white, I didn't even add any white to the blue, but because the white is already on there, the liquid white, the magic white, um, look, look how that beautiful, beautiful blend, oh my, beautiful, gorgeous. Now, now whatever's left over on your brush, you don't need to put very much on there, you can come down a little ways and add some more streaks of blue soft blue see just blend it back and forth look see how that's blending with the white so you come down into the come down you go up so you can get that nice soft look right isn't that pretty and maybe we'll put some more just some streaks of blue this is going to be a little different than your normal sky I like to do th things a little differently every now and then just so you can get some different ideas on on how to do different skies and different techniques. I have another technique I'm going to show you too, how to make clouds. Uh, I know I've showed you, you know, a dozen ways to make clouds, but I came up with one last night when I was practicing a little, and I came up with this really cool way to make some clouds, so I'm going to show you that in another video. I don't want to interfere in this one. See, I never look, I never even used any more paint, and you can see that the liquid white is still on the brush, right? So that's keeping, keeping it moving. Look, I never even used, look, so I save all that paint because if you don't use liquid white what happens is you end up using a ton of white trying to keep your painting wet right trying to keep your paints wet and you end up using a lot of paint but this way look you hardly need to use any paint because that that liquid white is uh, keeping it wet and blending it beautifully if you need a little more you just I'm just going to blend that a little bit more so you play around with it till you're happy so I'm just going to pick up a little bit more on the corner. Look, just a little tiny bit on the corner of my brush. There you are. Now this is probably too much. Let's see. Yeah, see there's a lot there. Because the, the white, the liquid white is spreading it out and moving it around beautifully. Look. I get so excited when I use this, this magic white, liquid white. I don't know what to call it. I should call it my white. <laughs> my magic white. Anyway. I'll come up with a name with it, but I, I don't sell it or nothing. I just made, this is just for us, just so we can make our own, because you can, uh, you can actually, um, I didn't know this before I made it, but uh, on the Bob Ross site, I think you can, you can get it on Amazon, I found, after I found some ac acrylic liquid white. Uh, it's a little jar, a little jar, about as big as this one, and I think it's $12 or so, so we can make some, you know, you can get that and try it out, and, um, or make your own, and I find making your own is you can have as much as you want. It's a little bit cheaper, but anyway, that's just some tips for you. Now we're going to put some pink in there. So I don't know if I don't know if that white is if that's thrown you off, but that's not on the painting. That's just on the uh, that's just on the Mac Tech. Okay, so that's okay. That's what the Mac Tech is there for. So it'll, it will take that. I just don't want it to throw you off. So now we're going to use a bit of pink. The liquid white should still be wet. I'm putting a little bit of red on the corner of my brush. Look, I'm barely using hardly any. This is the beauty of it. And what I'm going to do is add a bit of pink. Look, see how it's almost too much, isn't it? I mean, look at all the paint you're going to save. So I'm just putting that on there. Like I said, it's amazing, amazing. So pink and blue goes really nice together for some reason. And it's not even the complementary color on the, on, the, on the color wheel. But it goes so nice together. So I mean you can use the complement, uh, the, um, the wheel, you can use the color wheel to help you find your complementary colors. But that don't mean you can't mix other colors together now. Look how pretty that is. A little bit on the corner of my brush again. I'm even going to wipe some off because I think it might be too much. And I'm going to put it here. Pretty. 
so soft. That's what it does to it too. It also actually makes it really, really soft. Gives it a soft, beautiful blend. I can't believe it. Beautiful. You don't have to use it all the time. I mean, you go back to just normal. If you don't have it, just put white paint underneath it, like I said, and, and mist it a bit so the paint stays a bit, stays a bit wet a bit longer. You know, if you don't have the, if you don't have the liquid white, or you don't have the ingredients for liquid white, just use plain white. But put the plain white on your canvas. I'm going to use the same brush. Use this brush as much as I can because I, I just find that this brush works really well for a lot of things. And I'm going to put some ultramarine white did I say ultramarine white? Oh my goodness, <laughs> that's a new one. Maybe I'll come up with an ultramarine white paint. Um, so I'm going to put my titanium white on the corner. You can use plain white, okay? Just on the corner of my brush, I'm going to make a few little clouds. Nothing, nothing, you know, just a little circle. Just the corner of your brush and little circles. Look, see that? And move away. When you get one done, move away, because if you don't move away, you're going to get a blob, right? Just use the corner of your brush and move it around. That's all, look, see, you don't need to do anything else. Done. Alright, maybe there's a little one a little bit more on the corner of my brush. Maybe there's a little one up here. You can have them wherever you want, but you don't want to overdo it with clouds, okay? Just so you can barely see them. Alright. So you see that? And what you can do is to make them stand out a bit more, add a little more white, little circles. Just touch, move away, touch, move away, okay? Move away. Move away. And what you can do is take a little bit of your ultramarine blue, just a little tiny bit. Brush can stay dirty. Just a little tiny bit, okay? And what you can do is you can put some shadow underneath that cloud that you made. Nice. You just scrub it in. Scrub it in on the bottom. Don't go on the top. Don't don't go into what you already did. All right. A little bit up here. That's only just to make them stand out a bit more and give you a little bit of shadow. All right. See? All right. Just blend that in with the sky. They're cute little clouds, aren't they? I hope you can see it because uh, when you get a glare from the paint being wet, it's sometimes it's hard to see. So there now. We we have to go over that beautiful sky with some mountains. Now, let's be very careful because mountains are not that simple, are they? Although I showed you a simple way to do them. But what I'm going to show you is another simple way. It's the same thing. So we're going to take our dark color, so our ultramarine blue, some black, maybe a bit of red. You don't want it to be too black and green, you know. Just add some colors, dark colors. Mix them all up and see what you get. We want a nice dark color though. There we go, that's pretty. Isn't it pretty? Well, it's black, but it's, it's not as black as black. So what we'll do is we will make some shapes first. We'll decide. Now the mountain's not going to be exactly the same as the one that's on the picture, but we do our best, you know. So here's the painting. There's the mountains. All right, we're going to make them, you know, as best we can. Not easy to get the shape unless you completely copy it. So I will. I will, I will. Ooh, scary. <laughs> okay, the mountains come up to about here. I'm gonna make a little dead there, just to be sh just not to go too far up. And maybe I'll make another little one here. A little one here. So just make some marks of where you want your where you want your mountain. So let's take this and pull it up to this, okay? Oh, this is scary, isn't it? <laughs> oh my. And then I'm going to take another little one up here, pull up. And this one here is going to have to be a little bit higher, I think. So you can change things, we're okay, but you're using black paint, so you don't want to ruin your painting. So be very careful. I hope you don't run into any trouble. Um, and then you come down to this one. And then you have a little peak here. And then 
we will move down here. And you can also add more peaks if you want to after you get it done. Now that's not too bad. Now like I said, it's not exactly the same as the other one, but we'll, we'll, we will work with it. Now we'll fill it in. Starting to look better already. So pull it to the right, to the right, to the right. That will help you get some shape to your, all right? You can use a chisel edge or you can just pull down like that on the full. All right, oops, let's see what I did. I made a mess. All right, so, good. If you're right-handed, you probably just pull down the same thing. You do basically the same thing, so just do it with your right hand. But some right-handed people start in the opposite of, of what I'm doing. So, if you got problems, like I said, your right hand, you should be able to still make your mark up like that, right? Still put it out like that. I did it like this. And then you just push it in like that. And now look at that. A little bit of right handed stuff going on there. All right, now, what we're going to do to make sure that our mountains look good and we get the right shapes, we are going to make our squiggly lines. So you can shape them up if you got problems, okay? They don't come out right, just fix them up. I know some people have a lot of trouble with mountains. I try my best to make them as easy as I can for you. All right. And a little peek peeking out there. All right, so now let's use our squiggly lines to get the right shapes. So all you need for that is, I'm going to use my liner brush. I'm going to wet it, and I'm going to dip it in some white paint. I'm just going to put it through some white paint, just so I can get some squiggly lines. And make sure it's not dripping with water, because sometimes water gets up here and then just pours down and... Now, let's take the peaks. Let's find the peaks, okay? So there's a peak right here, right? So take that and make a squiggly line. All right, there's a squiggly line. And there's a squiggly line. Now, you can't see that one, so I'm going to do it again. All right. Now we'll do another one. Top of the peak. And make a squiggly line. Doesn't matter. You come over here. You go over there. As long as it's squiggly, okay. And a nice one right here. So I might move it over a little bit over here. I can always change it too. So you can always change it. So don't have to be. But this is a really good guide to help you get your mountains in a good shape. All right. And and I'm not sure about this one. I'll put a little bit of a squiggly line there to see what we're going to do with it. Okay, now we got the squigglies. Okay, I'm going to use my fan brush to put on my highlights on my mountain. And I am going to, because I, uh, if you do a, a, a knife and it doesn't work, if you can do a knife, you go right ahead, okay? Um, I tried a knife and I didn't get the look I was looking for. So I might sneak that in there somewhere. I, I, I tried it, I didn't like it, I took it out. So now I'm going to do it this way. So I'm going to put a, some titanium white, a little tiny bit of blue, a little tiny bit of red in my paint, would you believe? And this is going to be our highlight. All right, should be pretty. That should be pretty. So if you're right-handed, um, if you're right-handed, well, if you're right-handed, if you're right-handed, pull down like this. Just stand on the left side and start pulling down this way, and that way you'll get the same technique. So I'm going on a chiseled edge, and I'm pulling down, and I'm not going to cover up everything. I want I want some of the dark to show through. 
Use your squiggly line to help you. And we'll add highlights and things after, but we want to get this on first. There's your squiggly line. Pick up some more white if you need it. I'm not pushing very hard because I don't want to cover up all that blue that I got there. Or that, I'm sorry, that dark color that I have there, the mountain color. There we go. And we'll put some more over that. We'll just leave it as it is for now, like that. Pick up some more color. A little bit of red, a little bit of blue, a bit of white. Good. Some shadow up here. Want some up here. Follow your squiggly line. Leave open some spots. If we end up putting too much on there, we can always we can always uh, go back with some darks after. Okay. Just very gentle. And a little bit in here. See how, how those squiggly lines just give you such really nice shapes. Squiggly line here. Follow that. That will help you. And here. I'm leaving the I'm leaving the darks between on purpose. Might need a little more white picked up. Corner your brush, fine. Nice. Might add a little more white here. So you can go back and forth and, and fill in the spots that you want more white. What we'll do now is we will clean up, clean up the edges there. Bring that together. All right, so let's get a brush. What we'll do is we will take our flat brush. So next, what we'll do is we will take. You can take a flat brush, or you can take your you can take your fan brush or your flat brush and down here under the mountains we will take some really dark green paint a really really dark green paint so we're going to go with sap green and I'm going to put some blue in there darken it up and some red and if that's not dark enough you add more blue Nice color. That's nice, isn't it? I think that's not bad. Let's try that. And what we'll do is we'll probably put some line of just tap, 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 on top of your tape. Okay. Let's add a little bit of black to that green because I can't see it. Tap on top of your tape. Tap all the way across. Okay, get some more paint. It was dark, nice and dark. You want it nice and dark so you can see what you're doing. And we want contrast in our painting too. Now just pull it up. Pull it up so it looks like trees. There we go. Little trees. So simple. Right in the background, you barely see them. Perfect. All right, so it looks like we have, okay, so that's those little trees back here, okay? Right at the bottom of your canvas. Now when the paint all dries and everything all dries, we can probably put some mist in here, okay? 
but right now we have to figure out all this stuff here so I just put these little trees right here first I'll take off my tape now soon but I'm, I'm thinking we should put those little trees in here right so let's put those in let's try it <laughs> let's try All right, so those trees are pretty black, so add black to your green color that you made. All right, and there's your brush. And we are going to try and make touch. I know it's pretty scary when you get it done so nice. You know, anything you're scared to do, you don't have to do it right on your painting. You can practice on a piece of paper first. And if you still can't get it, leave it out. You don't have to do everything that's in a, in a picture or a painting or whatever you're doing. So just take the corner of your brush and start in the middle and move out, okay? Start in the middle and move out. Start in the middle and move out. Just tap, 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 tap. tap. Middle out, middle out, middle out. Alright. Middle out. We'll add some highlight to that to make it look like a tree. And there should be another one, a smaller one right here. Just touch, touch your fan brush, just touch so you can get that little top. Take the corner and just tap center and out, center and out, center and out. Flip it around if you lose the paint. Center and out, okay? Like I said, if you're having a hard time with these little trees, just put in little little bushes or something, but or not even put them there, okay? Because it can be a little tricky from time to time. So I'm gonna lie, I'm gonna highlight them a little bit with some green because I can't see them very well. And if you highlight them a bit, that will also give them better shape. So like I said, don't have the exactly the same. So I got some green paint on my brush. I'm just going to take the corner of my brush and tap at the right side of the, I'm going back and forth, on the right side of the tree. You can see that add a little bit of yellow to your brush and tap back and forth. Okay, so if you can't see it, just add more yellow to your green. There we go. And now you can see your tree. I want to give it a little bit of color. May not be as bright as that in your on the painting there, but it's okay. Now I think we're ready to take our tape off. So far, so good. So I'm going to put my liquid white on here. You can see the little bit of white coming out, you know, you can see it's white. See? That's going to help us with our painting. Sometimes it's not feasible. You know, if you're trying to work uh, and put, you know, um, what? Oh, what happened there? Oh, okay, yeah, it's still wet up on top. See how long it lasts? So that could be one thing that it may not be great. It might happen to you because it's still wet it might mix but if you're doing oil paintings you have the same same thing happening right so just got to be careful that's all and um, if you want to do some dry brushing uh, you got to wait for it to dry okay because you can't really dry brush with it all wet like that you might be able to but I find it easier when everything's dry so anything I want to do and then if you want to add something on, let's say you want to add a cabin you probably want to wait for it to dry. So different things that you can use that you may not want to use it for. All you can do is wait for it to dry. Or you don't even have to use it at all if you don't mind using more paint. So like I said, this saves you on paint and it helps it spread further. Brightens up the colors really nice. It's really nice. I love it. I'm having a hard time painting without it now. But I don't want you to feel that you have to use it all the time, just because I do. Okay, I don't want to do that to you. I want you to be able to be free and do whatever you want. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my liner and brush I'm going again. to add, take the, that dark color that I had there. It doesn't matter what color it is. It's just to give us an idea of what way we want our painting to be. And I'm going to take a little bit of a just a line coming over, sort of on a little curve, sort of like a little, a little curve. It doesn't matter if you make a mess there, that's okay, because we're going to be... I think that should be enough. We'll find out. I'm pretty sure that's good. So this dark color that used up here, we're going to just fill that in with that color, okay? So just use that dark green color. I even add a little bit of black to it, because I couldn't get as dark as I wanted to. So black and green, a bit of red. Right? That way it's not pure black. It's got a really nice color to it. A bit of yellow will green it up a bit more. See how you can just mix your colors together? It's really dark, isn't it? Add more green. I'm trying to get a bit of a dark green. It's not bad. Now because the liquid white is still wet, is wet, we will get a nice soft looking isn't that nice? It's really nice. Use the chiseled edge of your brush to see if you can get up there. You could also use you could also use tape, but I don't think we need it. Alright, so let's just get that on there. Fill that space in. Don't have to be perfect because we're gonna go up there with some of these little trees again. Right, so just fill in that space. Look how nice and smooth it is. So this is the easiest way I can you know I did that painting back in two thousand two thousand and seven. 2007. So I can't remember all every the way I did it. <laughs> I can't remember, uh, you know, how she did this part. So I'm just going to make it as easy as I can for us. Perfect. Perfect. A nice little spot now to add a bunch of things. Good. These little trees up here and the few bushes, take your liner brush and let's shape them up a little bit better. You can always shape things up and fix them up. So like, let's try and get a, we got a little top here. Just try to get some, some little edges that I didn't get, like some little, there we go, so it gives it a bit of a shape. So if your tree came out too round or didn't have much shape to it, just get your liner brush and start throwing a few little branches on the on the edge here. See? That looks a bit better, doesn't it? This one here too. Oh. Still wet. It's great. Oh, gosh, we've been working on that for a long time, and that paint is that magic white is, or yeah, magic white liquid white is still, still blendable. Just putting a little bit there. See? Now your tree looks like got a better shape. Not great. So now you got some shape. Isn't that nice? And these down here, I like to have more of those there too. I I'll probably could use my brush again, but we can pull up a few little. Alright.
It's always little tricks and tips that you can do. You might say, mine didn't come out, it didn't work. But look what you can do to fix it. Think in your mind. I know when you're new or you've only been painting for a few years, it's hard to know what to do unless somebody shows you. But, you know, that's why I watch lots of videos over the years, so I can pick up some extra tips and tricks, and then I'll come up with my own. And just think to yourself, now what could I do? It didn't work out, so what can I do to make that work? And look at your brushes, look at, sometimes look at some videos. Alright, so that's that. Good. So you can tap on some grass here. Yellow and green. Get your bristle brush. Just tap, tap, tap. Yellow and green. Don't even have to mix it. Just tap into yellow and green. Just make a mess. Look. See a mess I make? Isn't that wonderful? Some grass, just tap, tap, tap. You can also um, try your fan brush. Let's just try a fan brush. A little harder to control. That's why I like the bristle. Tap, 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 tap. Brighten it up a little bit more so you can see it. Just tap at it, tap at it. That's all. Tap, tap, tap. That'll give you some texture, see? There we go, a little bit of grass. Okay, so now I'll put some bushes down here, and I'm going to put some uh, green, a dark green. So I'll put some blue and yellow together, or sap green, it's okay. But we needed something either dar a bit darker than what you already have here, so we can make some bushes, okay? So you can see some just go over like that. And we'll decide. So you can see those, right? So you can see their bushes, kind of some kind of bushes going on there. So that's just to get us started. Some taller ones and other ones. And so I'm just trying to get something down here that I can try out my brush. So, so like I say, this brush here is great for foliage. I have my name is on it. Some people like to have it for my name. I like to have it for souvenir, which makes me feel pretty good. I appreciate that. And um, the bristles are long, and they are really nice, actually. So I'm I'm just going to use an old one I have here. Same brush, just that I. I got a lot of paint on it. But you can see when you wet it how the bristles go. They're not straight across, like they're really 
and when you open them up they they open up like that and they give you really nice flowers so let's try it let's try it here so let's go into some let's try some reds our, first first value green on there but we're going to put some colors on top of it, so we'll use red as a second value I'm just tapping on some flowers like this see that's pretty isn't it so we'll just put them there and this brush is open it's got red on it and we'll put some here these little dabs twist your brush whatever way works right that way it'll give you some nice flowers so we'll put we'll separate the reds and then we'll probably do some other colors so let's do a let's do some yellow yellow maybe a little bit of orange we'll I got a dirty today. brush right on it so I'm gonna make kind of an orangey color I got some more yellow there and I dip the two of that together and then I'm going to try and get a little more yellow on there a little bit better okay and then I'm going to put some orangey color in between there so I'll put touch so we'll do this see and they're kind of scattered which makes them nice put some more yellow on just dip into yellows and come on over here see the pretty flowers they're nice maybe another one over here pretty I'll add some green ones some green and yellow mix to brighten them up right here need a bit more maybe I'll add a little bit of white just to brighten it up good and now I think I'd like to try a little bit of blues I find blue really bright so up. I already have my reds and yellows and I have my medium uh, sorry my dark color we'll call it three three values and you can have three values different colors if you want as long as you got a dark medium and light so your dark medium and um, a light so I haven't got my light on yet but I'm going to do blues now I'm going to do my blues which is blue and a little bit of white to brighten it up a little bit and then I'm going to put them somewhere I don't know where yet maybe right here I'll just add a few little well it's pretty just look at that put them wherever they fit so pretty aren't they gosh isn't painting wonderful though it gives you such a nice feeling doesn't it doesn't matter what it turns out like you're just adding color to canvas that's the big thing you know color doesn't matter it comes out you know perfect flower or whatever it's the colors the colors and shapes you could even do abstracts by just having colors and shapes. So this is the brush that I'm doing these flowers with. Have a look around for them. If you can't find them or if you want one with my name on it, just my name, you know what I mean, for a souvenir, I could send it to you, but I have to charge of shipping and, and I, could just, I could send you a couple of them and a couple extra right. brushes. So anyway, so what I'll do now is I want the, I got my dark medium and uh, now I want to do my lightest lights, which I'm going to go right into my white, even though it's all dirty. I'm going to go into my white. I got the tips of my brush. See how they're all separated? See, it do all the work for you. So now I can add my lightest lights. Nice little white flowers on top of those. Look. Just here and there. Just here and there. And very, very lightly. Just touch probably even only a couple of the hairs of the brush. Okay? Just a couple of the hairs of the brush if you can. And if you want to, you can turn it this way and get those kind of flowers in there. And and some of these are just going in as for the third value. Cool. That's pretty. I don't want too many. I want to make it look like snow or something. That's nice. Brings it out. That's pretty. Now we already have a little bit of land here if you still have it. If you don't, fine. You can always put some back in. So what I was going to do just to make it look like um, there might be some shadows coming down here. Because our water is very light, we just need to make a few little shadows coming down here. Just, um, just to give it that little bit of uh, contrast. But the shadow could be coming from the background trees or something like um, like this. Whether it makes sense or not, it looks really pretty. 
see right there so um, let's do that let's just bring down some of that dark color there let's try it don't work out we can always go over again so I'm going to go with my dark color which is a dark green just my green I'm just going to add some darkness to it some blues and a bit of black if you want but not too much black and I'm going to drag down a little bit of this just drag it down the magic white might be dry by this time it's okay if it is just drag down a little bit of a uh, shell I don't ruin your painting on you by getting in to do this. There we go. If for some reason it doesn't work out for you, let it dry and then go back in with the, the light, the pink and the, the white. So you get a little bit of pink down here with your white. That's the reflection of the sky. All right. You can also put a little bit of blue in there if you want. So if your if your liquid white is, is dry, you can put a little bit of blue on your brush, a little bit of blue and white, and you can drag that right across there just to even out that end there. Just to even that out. Come back up on the very bottom of it. They get some of this blue water. I I experiment sometimes, so you know, like if you're finding some of the stuff I'm doing not what you want to do, you don't have to do it, okay? because the, the liquid white might be dry down here by this time and it might be, see how it doesn't blend as smoothly without the liquid white because mine is dry now so I had, a, I had to go get my supper so I mean I could put more on but I just decided you know to show you what you can can't do with and without and it okay. maybe a little bit of blue down here and also just same as what's up there on top pink and blues just add a little bit of white because I think it was too blue okay good all right it's nice so we're almost ready to take off the uh, so this here I want to put a little white a little bit of a white um, I'm going to use my I'll use my flat brush to do that. Uh, let's see, let's see what's good to use it. I think the flat brush should do okay. So take your flat brush, your chiseled edge, okay, see how chiseled it is? And put white on it. This might be the easiest way to do it. And then just put a little white line underneath the brown there to represent a water line. See? That's all. And just follow follow your little piece of land that you did. And if you lost your white, just go back in and get more. Go get more. There we go. Good. Now you can use a fan brush doing this. You can use a, a liner brush. Nice. All right. Good. So it's just a little bit of a water line there just to, to cover up some of that mess I made. <laughs> okay. I think we're ready for the reveal. But we got to put another tree on there, don't forget. Okay. So, but we have to take this off. 
you have to take this off in order to paint because that that's off there's nothing there now on the canvas so we have to take that off so that we can put that tree over here or on the other side wherever you want it some bushes down here for the tree to go up, right? We'll bring it in pretty close here. And uh, so get your dark green. Let's get your dark green. Your bristle brush. That's a smaller bristle brush. Now I'm not going to want my name on it. And we are going to start here. So we'll tap right here, okay? On the edge. And we'll just come down around here and we will come down and we'll come come in narrow so that we can end up and then we'll come down here fill it in tap 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 that will give you a nice a really nice textured look We'd be putting color on top of that. All right, so we'll do that and then we'll bring it probably up a little bit here just to give it some shape. That's not bad. Now we'll add some flowers to that. Shape it up a little bit. There we go. Try some yellow on the same brush that you're using now. Let's see what we can get out of that. Tap right here like this. There we go. Just tapping on like that. Yellows. Yellows for now. Go at the very top and then tap. You're almost tapping into the water, okay? You just tap it like that. And we will probably tap around a little bit more. Get some more yellow. Get a bit of white if you got to. Brighten it up. And then we will we will add a bit of red. So we'll add a bit of red on top here again, like that. We're going to use the other brush to get the, the bigger flowers there. I'm just going to tap in some of these reds. Good. Now we'll use the other brush, the bigger brush, is it going into my yellow, one in. going into my yellow, they're nice and spread out now, I should be able to get some really nice, that's, there we go, that's what I'm looking for, that's what I'm looking for, look at that, perfect, that's what I'm looking for, that brush amazes me, okay, and I am going to do the same thing with the reds, Clean off my brush a little bit, doesn't matter, could be oranges. And I got, see? I'm going right on top of what I did. Yep, there it is, there it is, there it is. Nice. I might put a couple in there. <laughs> I don't know. I just can't stop tapping when I do that. See that? Look at that beautiful air. Just come out so pretty. And tall. Be tall. I had a bit of white for the for the hot, brightest highlight. White, white. I like adding white to the flowers too. It just brings them right out. Look, see? Gives them another another look. Not too much though, because you don't want white dots, you know what I mean? Too much, just a little subtle. That's kind of nice, isn't it? Now I'll do the tree. So you draw your tree out first. I would say it'd be much easier for you if you do that. If you draw it out with uh, you know, a piece of chalk or a pencil or you know, something that is going to help you draw your trees out. I'm just going to use my brush because 
I guess I'm a little bit used to it. I'm not too afraid. <laughs> I'm a little bit afraid, but not too afraid. So um, I'm going to use my brush. Uh, let's see. I'm going to use a small flat chisel edge brush. It's probably size four. And I'm going to draw it out first. I'm just going to get a bit of black paint. Black. You know, use any dirty black you got there, right? And then I'm going to, now I'm going to make a decision and I am hoping to make a good one. I don't know what can happen. I'm just going to make a skinny line here first, just so I can get an idea, because you're going to really go into your painting. You make a mistake. Your whole painting is finished, right? So if you want to use chalk first, you, it'd probably be better. Put chalk on there first. All right, so I'm going right. to take my brush, and I'm gonna, I think I'm going to pull up, I think. All right, let's keep our fingers crossed. Uh-oh, here we go, here we go. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, I lost the paint. I didn't put enough on my brush, even with the liquid white. Not again. Alright, here we go. I'm going to start here where it came off. Not bad. I must have had enough liquid white on my brush. That's okay. Either not enough liquid white or not enough paint. Because you've got to go a long ways before you want to stop. But So make sure you put lots of uh, paint on your brush for this one. So you can make, if you can make a smooth line, if you can make a smooth line like that, then you get these nice there edges that are... But if you put your brush like this, and you pull up, it should give you some nice edges. It's just that you can have a lot of paint on your brush to get those nice edges, so. That's not bad. All right, let's do the other tree. So the other one's here. Might come down, no, okay. Okay. All right, so I'm giving me a little bit of a mess here, but I'm going to keep the, keep the camera rolling. I'm not going to go away and then fix it all up perfect. And, and you think, oh, how come she did that so good and I can't do it? See? So you can see now that sometimes it's not easy. I'm just getting that edge there. That's okay. Take your dark colors and put it on your chiseled edge and of your brush. And using the right? chiseled edge, we are going to take out some branches. And then we will take our chiseled edge, our brush, and we will now take, get that up there like that. You can also make them crooked. You don't have to be straight. And you take another branch off of that, another branch off of that. So when you get a branch done, just take another branch off of it and use the edge of your brush because these are going to be the thicker ones and I'm going to put some thinner ones on it, okay? So make sure you get a chiseled edge brush. And again, your dark color. Wet it up. Make sure it's wet. And then roll it in your paint. Just roll it in your dark paint. And then we'll make smaller branches. So you just take a smaller branch off of that one. See that? Take a branch off a branch.
little bit of water to your brush and then bring in liquid white. Clean them up. Now, I won't, I'm doing a video, so I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna spend, I've been on this now since this morning. And it's now, going for quarter to eight in the night. And I started this, um, I don't know, it was around one o'clock or so in the afternoon. So, you know, I, it's a, a, a long painting and it could be even a lot longer if I wanted to take a lot of time to really do those branches, you know, and do do a lot more with it and take my time. I could I could shut it down for the day and, and and do it again tomorrow, but I want to finish this for the video. That way I can get on something else again tomorrow because I'm I upload three times a week and it takes a lot of hours just to do even one. Then I have to edit it. So my editing is another my editing is another probably four to eight hours. So, you know, it is a bit of work, but it's fun. I enjoy it. I wouldn't do it if I didn't like it. And um, sometimes I do really fast paintings, and other times I just can't seem to get it. I can't seem to get it done. I can't get it done right or whatever, right? Like, I'm not too happy with those flowers there. I might dab at those with a bit of dark green. I'm going to tone them down with a bit of dark green. And uh, so use your sap green if you like, or whatever colors you I want to put together, I'm putting together some blue, some yellow. I like making my own deck. I'm just playing around with my colors. I'm just going to tone them down. I really feel that they're too... There was too much or something. There's too much of them. There's something going on there that really is bothering me. And I'm not fussy about them. So I'm going to just add a bit of bit better. Now we are going to get our fan brush. We don't have much left to do now. We're going to get a bit of white paint and a little bit of blue added to it. A little bit of blue in there already. Okay. The fan brush. We're just going to take our fan brush. We've done this before. Touch the side here, pull in. If you don't put too much paint on your brush, it will come off better. I got too much paint down there. paint still wet and is mixing with white that's a good thing. It's getting all kinds of shadows now. Alright, so that's a bit too much down there. So I'm going to put some in Sienna.
show. I'm going to take my, my one inch bristle, tap into some red and orange, yellow, and I'm going to put some here by the tree. Just tap, tap, tap. Get some flowers. Maybe some little white ones in there somewhere. So if you end up doing what I did, you're trying to adjust things, you come out over the edge, just put a bit of white paint there. Just wipe off what you could and, and then add a bit of white. Don't worry, you'll add a bit of character. You'll add a bit of character to your painting. Don't worry too much. As long as you get a bit nice, you know, I mean, don't have to be perfect yet. To me, I could do it, you know, I, I would like to, I'd like to do it again and probably add and you know get uh, some more and see what the other what results you know I could get but for now and for the video sake and for you guys I tried to make it as easy as I could uh, it's not real real easy so it's probably another in intermediate painting so some of my paintings are easy for people who've been at it for probably um, just starting out and, and starting to get used to it and there's uh, intermediate paintings where you really need to have some idea of how you do your strokes and mix your colors and things and then there's advanced which is even more advanced than this which I, I probably could try to do something a little Well, thank you very much for painting along with me and I hope you enjoyed that painting and if you liked this video then you can subscribe so you can get more free videos and you can like share if you could if uh, you think it could help other people and if you have any questions just leave it in the comments section below and uh, you or you can email me at alisonpryoryahoo.com so I'll see you in the next video